Hi there, Sanjay Gangal from GIS Cafe. I'm here with Sam Gordy, the U.S. President at Jains. Uh, hello, Sam. Hello, Sanjay. Very nice to meet you today. Uh, very nice to meet you too, Sam. Uh, so, uh, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Jains? Uh, sure. So I'm I'm now I'm now six months into Jains. So I started at the, started at the end of the January, and I am president of Jains US. So Jane's, of course, is a is a UK based company out of London, England, um, and it operates globally. Uh, and and there's there's essentially three markets that we're divided into: so Europe, Middle East, and Africa, Asia Pacific, and and US and the Americas. And so I head up the US and Americas, so all of our go to market uh, into the US intelligence community, Department of Defense, uh, and then uh, and then academia, colleges and universities. Okay, and uh, so tell us about Jane's also, the company. So Jane's itself is a 125-year-old company, started hmm. started uh, be, before 1900 by a gentleman by the name of Fred T. Jane, uh, very interested in capital ships and, and acquiring that information. So, so out of that was born all the world's fighting ships, uh, which, hmm. is, which is sort of our historic legacy for a good, 120 of those 125 years, we really thought of ourselves as a publishing company. But a good five years ago, we we really went through a, a deep look of who we are and who we should be going forward and made this shift from publishing to open source intelligence, which is how we would describe ourselves today as a global open source intelligence agency. Okay, and uh, what is Jane Sintara? Uh, Jane's and Tara is, is actually, and Tara itself is a combination of two words. So int for intelligence. Ara is the altar upon which the Greek gods swore their allegiance uh, before they went off and battled the Titans. So, so that is the name of, of what we would call our flagship Jane's product. And it, it's really at the base of what I described in that shift from publishing to open source intelligence. So Intara is a, is a graph database. Uh, based on a data model that Jane's put together that tracks everything from foundational military equipment to everything associated with that military equipment, to the order of battle, to the countries that are operating it, even, even the movement of those units within the field and so forth. So this graph database has within it over 75,000 pieces of equipment 70 million linkages and growing. So every day it's it's growing by by tens of thousands of links as you combine those pieces. So if you think of one aircraft has, has communications equipment associated with it, has radar equipment, has weapon systems, has engines, has flight profiles, and that sort of thing. All of that's linked together in this graph database, which allows you to essentially go down any path of information that you as an intelligence analyst would would be interested in using to understand something about equipment or, or a battle or a country's capabilities uh, from a military perspective. Okay, and, and you use a lot of open source data to uh, develop your uh, uh, database? It is completely 100% open, open source information. So none of, none of our information is classified. It's all available online, assuming you have a subscription, and uh, and it's fully shareable across Five Eyes, across NATO, across any any third-party player to include uh, uh, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and, and so forth. So that is one of the tremendous advantages, uh, is that number one, it's completely open source, and and just the the shift that we've seen in the in the digital age, the information age, everything becoming coming online, uh, the ability to gather open source information has just increased, you know, exponentially, you know, year over year. Uh, can you uh, tell us about your sources of open source data? Uh, so we have at the front end of our process, uh, certainly a, a host of uh, AI machine learning capabilities. And so, so in essence, we've, we, we take those and we've curated those to look in the certain areas that James is, is very interested in. So, so we are very much focused in the area of national security and military capabilities. So, so that's the front end of our funnel, if you will. It's going out to 
uh, official news publications. It's going out to look at uh, you know all sorts of social media feeds. So so the good news or the bad news is when a when a soldier posts a picture of of himself or herself on a tank in a in a in a geotagged location. That gives us information about what unit is operating in that location and, and what equipment they have uh, and, and all of that sort of at the front end of our funnel. The key for what James does is we then have five to six hundred intelligence analysts who take that raw data every day and curate it to take it from what I would call open source data to open source intelligence. And it's that open source intelligence at the end of the day we're providing out to our customers. Okay, and and uh, would you be looking into all the sources of open source uh, data, uh, like the equivalent of, let's say, Facebook, uh, Twitter, and stuff in different countries uh, like India, China, Japan, uh, Korea, and stuff like that? Uh, 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 do you uh, go into other countries' uh, 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 sort of social networks as well? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And Weibo over in China and, and, and others. So so we're looking at all at all those different social media accounts. We're looking at at you know industry posts, information coming from trade shows, information coming from journalism, uh, and so forth. So so we mentioned Intara earlier. Another one of our key product areas is what we call country intelligence. So so we we put together uh, country intelligence reports for 197 countries around the world. So that's that's all based on all that information coming in from social media or other publicly available sources. Of course, China, Russia, North Korea, Iran are are high on that list. But with the high 197 countries, we're we're going you know across the board. Uh, we've tiered those out. So there's sort of tier one through tier four in the frequency and level of detail. Uh, that we go to. And of course, a tier four country can very quickly catapult to a tier one, uh, like the Sudan did. If, if, mm -hmm. if something happens, then all of a sudden our resources shift and our attention, you know, we'll, we'll dive in on, on that uh, particular country or hotspot of the world for the period of time that, that things are operating. Um, just an anecdotally, when, uh, when uh, you give me uh, the, and Wagner Group sort of staged staged their bit of a coup there in Russia a few weeks ago. Uh, obviously, the team turned to on that, and we had a minute by minute timeline of what was happening. And and of course, I'm sure you saw the news reports. There were people doing you know selfies there with the with the tanks in the streets. So so we had very good uh, uh, geospatial you know time bound information on what what where the unit was at what point in time and what the reactions were. And then, and then we folded in on top of that the uh, the official statements that were coming from all the regional governors from across Russia. Uh, I say all the regional governors. Actually, it was not all of them. So, so very particularly tracking the ones that did report and the ones that didn't uh, as they came online and and swore their allegiance to uh, to Vladimir Putin. And uh, and then we're sort of tracking the ones that didn't and and where they were moving as well. So. Again, all of that coming in from from completely open source information, but from that you're able to paint you know a very detailed picture of what's unfolding in a very tight time period. So. Okay, and and you also mentioned that you have an AI engine in front of all the stuff. Uh, is that uh, uh, your proprietary AI engine, or uh, do you use uh, uh, the Chat GPT type uh, Open AI uh, stuff as well? Yeah, actually, so we, we we do not have a proprietary AI engine. So the, the proprietary part of James is our intelligence trade craft and our intelligence analysts. Uh, we're actually somewhat agnostic on the on the AI ML engine. We're we're actually constantly reviewing those engines which are out there and available. And uh, and that allows us to sort of shift quickly if we find one that's more capable or that's giving us a, a, a different data feed from what we're we're used to normally seeing. So we we mix and match those uh, in, in the execution of the business. And uh, but but we are pulling those in from the outside, and it it benefits our business model to do that. And, and one of the challenges of the Chat GPT type uh, uh, AI models is that it needs training. Uh, so do you have any people within Jane's uh, who are constantly training these AI models? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So that so that is where you would see sort of the the AI proprietary piece come into play. So so again, we have Antara, our graph database. That's a, a tremendous background of, of of curated intelligence information, and and certainly our analytical teams. The the largest part of Jane's falls within we within what we call research data and analytics. Uh, and part of that team is is training those AI models, of course. Um, and that's that's been an ongoing activity ever since we we took Jane's online. Actually, we we took Jane's online before AI really came into came into play. But that gave us a a ready source of training material, if you will. Again, completely unclassified, so we didn't have to worry about doing it behind closed doors or anything. Hmm. Uh, but but certainly, you know that that is something we guard jealously from a from a Jane's perspective as as part of our proprietary tradecraft. Uh, no, if, if, if a uh, defense agency or a country wants to use Jane services, but then they want to integrate their proprietary or uh, 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 secret uh, defense information, uh, do, you, uh, uh, do you have a way to let the, uh, a company enter their own data also so that they can uh, mix and match it with the public data? Yeah, absolutely. Because fully, fully recognize that what we're providing as as Jane's open source intelligence is not is not the holistic answer, right? And and so the the data model is absolutely designed from the very beginning to allow for other data sources to to come into play. So without going into detail on specific agencies, I can certainly say we we support the U.S. intelligence community and Department of Defense today. And they are absolutely using Jane's both on the low side, completely unclassified, but they're also taking that up to the high side and then and then bringing in, you know, secret, top secret, SCI, you know, related information and and tying that in. Of course, of course, once that once that's done, we're not we're not bringing that back over to to the mm -hmm. low side. You know, that's a that's a one way street, if you will. Um, but but the Jane state is being updated every day, so you sort of have that flow. As as we're releasing more information, that's moving through the unclassified wickets up up to the high side. Okay, and uh, what should we expect from Jane's moving forward? Uh, well, we're we're uh, so I'm I'm here at Jane's. As I said, I've I've been here six months. Our our goal here is to really focus in on the on the U.S. market and what we're providing uh, to to the United States. That's been something that that Jane's has not specifically focused on. We've had folks here in the United States, but but uh, but not a, a tremendous presence. We're really focusing on building up that team. So we now have over 75 people uh, here in the United States. Some of those are on the go-to-market side, but some are on the research and, uh, and, and intelligence side of the house as well. Uh, so we're we're certainly looking to 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 improve that, to increase the size of the team, and to be doing more across the full scope of the U.S. government. Uh, I'd say our our presence here in the U.S. is is relatively small. There's there's a lot of agencies. There's a lot of military services. There's a lot of combatant commands. Uh, where where I think our chains open source intelligence would be of tremendous value, and we're looking to bring that out across the market. Uh, and it's that, that's certainly the go to market strategy. I would say beyond that, uh, Jane's is is continually looking to expand what we bring as a product. Uh, so whether it's Intara or it's country intelligence. Or Intel Track, which is looking at Chinese and Russian investment around the world, and the whole Belts and Roads Initiative. What are they doing to to use the power of the yen, the power of the ruble, to to gain influence? We're continuing to look to expand those products, so we'll certainly be doing that over time as well. Okay, and uh, uh, what is the best way for our audience to find out more about Jane's on the internet? So Jane's.com. Uh, would be the uh, would be the way to find that out. So you 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 can go out to Jane's. It will it will tell you about Intara. It'll tell you about country intelligence. Tell you about Intel Track and the other capabilities that that we have to offer. Uh, of course, there's a contact us component about that. So so if you're looking for more information, just fill that out. If you're here in the United States, that'll vector to me and my team, and we'll we'll take it and run with it. Okay, and, and some. Uh... Uh, shifting gears here. Uh, what do you do for fun outside work, or what is your personal passion? So, so it's uh, it's very appropriate actually that I'm here with James. My 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 personal passion is military history. My 
my father was a P-38 fighter pilot in World War II, and I, I think I knew what a P-38 Lightning was before I even started nursery school. Uh, so, so World War II military history uh, is probably number one. Uh, I spend a lot of time reading. I've got an extensive library. My wife keeps asking me if I buy another book, do I think there's really going to be a different outcome in the war? <laughs> but, uh, but, but she does allow me to go buy those books. So, so that's certainly part of it. Uh, beyond that, uh, I'm uh, born and raised a sailor. So I grew up sailing on Chesapeake Bay uh, and, and certainly love doing that as well. Uh, and, and Sam, uh, can you also share something about yourself? that most people at uh, Jane's who work with you don't know about you? Uh, so, so, so why not in there is I was, I was captain of my high school's Nordic ski team. Uh, so most folks probably know that as cross country skiing, but if you're, in, if you're, if you're into actual racing, you refer to it as Nordic. So I grew up doing that in uh, just outside of Massachusetts. Okay. And final question here, Sam, cats or dogs? Uh, absolutely dogs. Uh, I have a, I have a soon to be 13 year old golden retriever, uh, whose name is Finn and uh, she's a wonderful dog. I grew up on golden retrievers and, uh, so hundred percent, I'm a dog guy. Oh, awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Sam, for taking time to record this interview. Have a great day and stay safe. Okay. Thank you very much, Sanjay. Enjoyed it as well. Okay. This is Sanjay Gangal from GIS Cafe.